actually, I'm not going to talk about Mernissi as much as about around Mernissi. Uh, because uh, I found it was important to come here and talk about it because after all, we were in the same institution um, in the Faculty of Letters. She was in the Department of Sociology and I was in the Department of uh, the English, uh, English Literature, Anglo-American uh, Literature and Linguistics. And it felt like, um, because we never met, Actually, it was in, the, in this period of the 80s. I'm 17 years younger than Mernissi. She lived the colonial experience and then the post-colonial experience, but at some point we met. We met in those in the 80s. I mean, we met like peers of the same gen of in a certain moment, uh, the 80s. So in the end, what interests me most in my, the, 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 the link between me and her is this period from the 70s, end of the 70s when I was a young girl and I was a feminist on my own, uh, Virginia Woolf would say a room of her own, actually it did apply to me, uh, a feminist on my own because how could you be intuitively a second wave kind of feminist when Morocco was in a completely different, um, um, uh, yeah, different um, dynamics, and feminism was not even heard of at that time. The, 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 the most progressive thing you could have then was uh, those uh, socialists, uh, like, a f f like a party, USFP party, uh, um, let's say progressives or, new or, 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 or extreme left, who would defend uh, the woman's um, question uh, said or presented in a 19th century way, Victorian way. But I mean, it was not really a feminist consciousness. It was the it was that kind of um, defending women's cause uh, together, along with economic issues and so on. Because it was adamantly um, uh, convinced that you cannot actually talk of women's struggles or women's rights before a country would develop completely or uh, reach a certain level. Nobody knows what that level was, but that's how it was. Um, I was not convinced with party politics. I, uh, I participated in certain, but I always kept a distance. Now, when I was a, a university lecturer and researcher, we didn't, there was this also, this problem of disciplinary, you know, dis, the, the, the uh, di kind of like, like, uh, like Fatima Manisi likes a lot. She loves this concept of hudud, of, of borders. And they were literal. The hadoots were literal, in the sense that on, uh, when you are when you belong to a discipline, you just you hardly interact with uh, with, with colleagues from another discipline. For you to to get interdisciplinary, you have to go abroad. And I did go abroad, and I did do uh, feminist research, Anglo-American feminist research, but from a, uh, an a interdisciplinary um, uh, uh, perspective. With, and then it was the beginning. Well at least in Leuven, not in Britain, I'm sure, because they were far ahead, cultural studies and so on. And I'm talking about the period of the early 90s, the early 90s when I was, uh, when I was doing uh, doctoral research there. So it's this very frustrating relationship I have with Mernissi, which I call absence-presence relationship, which makes her even closer, uh, ironically speaking, um, she talks to me more like that because it's a very authentic kind of relationship. Um, I cannot uh, romanticize it. I can only say this is how it happened in a particular uh, natural, uh, national framework, post-colonial framework of the early decades. There were many problems, many difficulties uh, that crossed like, like you have, when I, talk, when I think of modernism, for example, the modernist intellectual, there was, there was absolutely no way you could have any homogeneity whatsoever. There was so much heterogeneity and so many rich things going on, which of course, and that was the most clever thing I find about Manisi, is that she really did make the best out of that peri periodic, out of that period. She really managed to be uh, herself, to have, th there was her professional, um, uh, let's say, uh, career, it was, she just responded to the different um, experience she had in different um, uh, parts of her history. 
She had a very physical contact. She, she, she knew what colonialism was about, whereas we just, we had a kind of more abstract approach to it. Um, uh, she, 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 she did not buy the, the, the kind of local secularism that was very much prevalent among modernists in Morocco, like uh, whether the, the socialist left or the extreme left. She was just herself. She was taking into account the different strands, the different layers of, of, of thought in the society and her own positioning. She was very clear about it. She, was, she had a very clear sense of purpose. She knew what she was doing and without any um, reductionism or essentialism. Although I would like to open a parenthesis here at this point because I think that I did have a grudge somehow against Manisi on the level of on the level of the binary uh, east-west uh, binary, the fact that she chose um, I I I'm, I'm very proud of that now. But you need a lot of historical distance. You need a lot of distance to realize how important uh, it was then. But at the time, I thought that, like many people, thought that yeah, she was talking to Westerners, um, like uh, somehow. Uh, uh, using some, um, you know, exoticism, using certain things to, to appeal to a Western audience. It's true, but, but it was even more true than my essential, I would now very uh, shamelessly say, then my essentialist, um, let's say, premise was what actually made me think like that. Because I did not accept to put um, Manisi within the, the historical, within the, the contextual, a framework, which was not easy at all. And I thought that she was uh, being reductionist uh, and that she should have be, she should not have kept that uh, dichotomy east-west for her main uh, rhetorical uh, communication conversationalist style. She was very good at it. And um, that was my problem then. Um, I thought that since, it, why, why not just um, uh, place oneself amidst the complexity. But to tell you the truth, if she had done that, I think she would have gone, gone lost because it was not easy in that period, considering the, the, the tensions and the different conflicting uh, uh, intellectual orientations and considering the political uh, uh, face that we call Anne de Plom, uh, the, the, the heart, I mean, it was a lot of political repression. It was not um, obvious, I think, for somebody like Fatima Manisi to have to place herself in a in a space where she could be, where she could have consensus, without being, without making it, without being. Uh, uh, sorry for the expression, in, uh, inauthentic, because I don't believe in authenticity either. But but I mean, without really. Um, um, uh, by being just very political and gathering around everybody, like saying everything is nice. She didn't do that. She didn't do that. So she kept a high degree, a high level of, of complexity, and she, she managed to balance out um, uh, uh, writing uh, theoretical positions with, with, with practical, very practical, uh, and very uh, activist kind of. Uh, uh, programs and agenda. She was actually leading a lot of a lot of uh, uh, mobilization that was going on in the country, while being very creative in different genres and styles, including fiction. When she was a sociologist, she was for me. I find that she 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 even like many Western feminists would um, would uh, associate her to Beauvoir as a first first wave kind of uh, feminism. In a way, it's true because she did, she did defend the causes of first wave, that it basically equality of rights. But she was more than that because you could she somehow crossed generations of feminism. She would she she you could connect her to second wave and to third wave as well in the sense that she was, she she did not really believe in uh, in simple identities that were very dear to second wave feminism. Um, what else can I say? She did not. She 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 uh, she didn't care that much about his uh, about uh, Western historiographies, because from the beginning she was very c 
clear about it. What she wanted to do was to study the history and the current situation of women from the Islamic world, uh, Arab Islamic world. And she did that, she did that very brilliantly. She did not need to have the, um, the support or, the, or, 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 or that to see herself through the eyes of another kind of feminism. But that does not mean that she was kind of, like you would say, pure in her, in her, in her approach. She, she did not, she, she, she did, um, she did participate, she was cosmopolitan, both locally and outside. She, she went to America, she must have studied a lot. She must have studied a lot of t different traditions. But she always managed to have her own discourse, um, not just imitate. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's um, it, it's. Um, I find that the may the most maybe difficult thing, uh, hi, I mean, from uh, that kind of history, is the 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 fact that we had like academic feminists in Morocco. Um, they were somehow in another kind of logic. They were not really busy with the evolution, the, the, the internal evolution of the country. They were more um, like this, what you would, what, well, what Spivak would call the Westerners, Easterner uh, position. So look like looking at yourself from the position of the Westerner and of course trying to be a very good student when it comes to questions of uh, having to do with the veil, with emancipation, with secularism. But uh, I, think, I think that Fatima Manisi, if there is anything that, is, that I find is his, her main str strength, is that she did not care about external definitions. She did not even care what, what kind of feminism she was involved in, because you have, uh, you have in her discourse, you have uh, Islamic uh, 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 dimensions, and you have, at the same time, secular dimensions. So I, I uh, after, I mean, with a lot of, um, I have now kind of rereading, because after this distance, I, I see her in a different way than before. Um, that's, I think, mainly what I wanted to say, is that, that uh, she will keep on being a, 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 big, a, a great lady, um, a, a leader, an inspirer, not only to, uh, of course, not specifically to my generation, but especially for future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you.